Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm answering question number four from the um, Edexcel um, January 2007 C4 paper. This is an old core Mass 4 from the old Edexcel syllabus, which is 6660666601. Okay, um, and this is now in the P4 syllabus since it changed in around 2019. And now, here we're asked first to express this fraction in partial fractions. It means we have to split it up into separate fractions. Okay, so we've got 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 over 2x minus 3. So we see here we have a denominator which is made up of pro a product of linear factors. They're both linear factors. Okay, so when you split this into partial fractions, it splits up into two fractions. Before, before we start doing that, we must check to see, is this a proper or improper fraction first? So that's always the first thing you check. Is it improper fraction? You ask yourself that. Because then it will change the, uh, the answer. All right, so here we see that you have the highest power in the numerator is x. The highest power in the denominator is x squared. So this is a proper fraction. Okay, this is a proper fraction. So we don't have to worry any, about any whole parts for it. If it was that the numerator, for example, said 2x squared, then or 2x cubed or any higher power than um, x, then it would be improper because the numerator and the denominator would have either the same power or the numerator would have a power greater than that of the denominator. Then we would have to split it up into a whole number part, a qu uh, like a, um, a whole number part, and then you would have the you like is like the quotient and then you'll have the fractions which will be the remainders okay so um, because it's a proper fraction we don't have to worry about that you'll find some questions in the playlist of uh, you know prop, uh, partial fractions where you'll see I have split up improper fractions as well and you can have a look to see what, exactly what you need to do in the case it's an improper fraction but in this case we don't have to worry about that we can split straight into two separate fractions with a constant which we have to find over the first linear factor plus another constant which is you have to write as a different constant over the second linear factor okay so now what we need to do is find the values of a and b and then we have split this up into two separate fractions partial fractions so in order to do that now what we have to do the next step is we must multiply whatever it takes to get rid of the fractions from this equation you could say so what i'm going to do is i'm going to multiply both sides of this it's really an identity by the lcm of the denominators which is x minus 1 and 2x minus 3 that's the lcm so if i multiply the left side by this the whole of that cancels out leaving you with just the numerator which is 2x minus 1 if i multiply each of these terms by this, well, if you multiply this by a over x minus 1, the x minus 1 part cancels out, leaving you with 2x minus 3 multiplied by the a. And if you multiply the, this fraction by that, the 2x minus 3 part cancels out, leaving you with b times x minus 1. Now what we can do is we can find the values of a and b. In, there's different methods we can use, okay? Most, pro, most, um, the most kind of, like uh, the easiest, I guess, way of dealing with it in, in this particular situation is to find a value of x which causes one of these brackets to become zero to eliminate that letter. So for example, I know if I put x equals one in this bracket, okay, if I replace the x with one, this becomes zero b, so the b is eliminated, and then I'll be able to find what a is. So if I substitute x equals one into the whole of this identity, you could say, uh, that will be two times one minus one, which is one equals and there'll be a times two times one which is two minus three which is minus one and this is going to become of course zero all right which is what we wanted to get rid of the b so we can see from this that a is going to be negative one so we know the value of a is negative one so this minus one of x minus one that part and to find b we can do something very similar we could substitute x equals whatever makes this bracket zero. What, do, what makes the bracket 2x minus 3? What makes that zero? Well, that's when x equals 3 over 2. 
So I can replace the x with 3 over 2. And here I'll have 2 times 3 over 2. I'll write this out so we can show those steps. 2 times 3 over 2 minus 1. And this will be a times, and this is going to give you 0, because you'll have 2 times 3 over 2, which is 3, minus 3, which is 0, plus b times 3 over 2 minus 1. <clears throat> so now um, this will give us, this is going to be, the 2's cancel out, 3 minus 1, which is 2, is equal to, and b, b, that's going to be 3 over 2 minus 1, which is a half, that's 2 equals a half times b. So therefore we can say b is equal to 2 times 2, which is 4. All right, multiply both sides by 2, you'll end up with 4. So now what we can say is 2x minus 1 over x minus 1 times 2x minus 3 is identical to, I, I'll, I can write it like this, is minus 1 of x minus 1 plus 4 over 2x minus 3. So I'll write the, this part first so it looks nicer. So 4 over 2x minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 1. And that's what we had to do for part A. To write that as in terms of partial fractions. Split it up into two separate fractions. So there's part A. And then part B says, given that x is greater than or equal to 2, find the general solution of the differential equation. So this part of the question is about solving differential equations. So I'm going to need this result in a minute. Let me just, um, just set this up first. So to solve differential equations, um, I'd like to teach you from the kind of like... Um, the logical kind of um, not just tell you exactly how you go about and do it but give you some reasoning for why what we're going to see actually happens right and a lot of people don't actually write these steps down and you don't really have to write these steps down but I'm trying to show you where this particular you know concept comes from okay so what we're actually doing here when we solve this general equation so when you have a differential equation all that means is in the equation, before we start, there will be a dy dx. Okay, we're only dealing in P4 with first order differential equations, so we'll only find dy dx if we won't find d squared y dx squared. That would be a second order differential equation. We only deal with first order differential equations in P4. So all it means by differential equation is an equation that has dy dx in it. Okay, that's all it means. And when you solve it, you have to rewrite it as y equals some function of x. That's how you solve a differential equation. So it says find the general solution of the differential equation. You want to find y in terms of x. And general solution means you're going to have a constant. Like when you integrate something, you have a constant okay, um, of integration. And you have to find the general solution. There's no particular solution. You don't have any more information to find a particular solution. So we want to solve this so that in the end we end up with y equals no dy dx, or to get rid of the dy dx, basically. Now the way we do that is as follows. So we have 2x minus 3 times x minus 1 dy dx equals, and you have 2x minus 1 times y. Okay, that's what we have to solve. This is the differential equation we're asked to solve. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like we do for every type of equation that we solve. What we do to one side, we do exactly the same to the other. So if I want to get rid of this, I have to integrate this side with respect to x. And therefore, I must also do the same thing to the other side. Whatever you do to one side, you do exactly the same thing to the other. So I'm going to integrate this side also with respect to x. Now what happens here is that cancels out. All right, and now we're left with just dy over here. So this side will be the integral of something with respect to y, and this side will be the integral of something with respect to x. Okay, because here you're left with dx, here you're left with dy. Now on the side that you have dy, all the y terms have to be written on this side, and the side that says dx, all the x terms have to be written on this side. So both of these terms go from this side. You divide both sides by 2x minus 3 times x minus 1, and they'll end up on this side in the denominator. Okay, and on top you'll be left with 1 here. And here you already have 2x minus 1, which will stay where it is, 
but this y also can't stay on this side. I have to divide both sides by y to get rid of it, so therefore it'll end up over here on this side. All right, this is called separating the variables. Most people jump straight from this to this, and that's perfectly fine, but I want you to understand why we get to this stage, because we have done something to one side of the equation, which is integrated with respect to x, and we did the same thing to the other side of the equation, integrate with respect to x, that's why we end up with this thing with dy here and dx there. Now, we are ready to integrate, except now this cannot be integrated in the way it looks, the way it is right now. However, if we just look up a bit, we see that that's exactly the same expression that we split up into partial fractions. And I can integrate something like that, I can't integrate something like this. So that's the reason why they asked us to split it up in part A, so it will help us to answer part B. So now I'm going to rewrite this as the integral of a few things you, I want you to take care of because many of you students, you don't you know, write these things in proper notation. First of all, this, I haven't integrated it yet, so I still have the integral sign, and I'm going to put a bracket, and I'll put 4 over 2x minus 3 minus 1 over x minus 1. Don't forget the dx, and don't forget the bracket. The whole of this expression is integrated with respect to x. And here this will be as it is for now. I won't start integrating until I start the other side. Now, I want to integrate this. This side is integrated with respect to y. 1 over y becomes the lin of the modulus of y. And then when I start integrating this, I, I don't write the integral sign anymore when I start integrating. Now, this is similar to that in terms of the numerator is of the form of the differential of the denominator. If I, dif if I differentiate the denominator, I'm going to get a constant. That is a constant. Same with this. right? So I can use this technique of using lin. It's like reversing the chain rule. So I'm going to write this as 4 times the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 3. Then I have to divide by the differential of what's inside the function. So I'm going to divide by 2 minus, and here I'm going to have 1 times the lin of the modulus of x minus 1. I'm going to divide by the differential of 1, which is 1, so no need to write anything, plus the constant of integration, which I write here. That plus c incorporates the constant from this side and from that side. That's fine. You can write just plus c there. And now we have integrated this. Okay, so we can say the lin of the modulus of y is equal to 2 times the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 3 minus the lin of x minus 1 plus c. Now it's saying here, give, find the general solution. Okay, if we wanted to, we could leave the answer like this. Because it didn't tell us to put it in any particular form. Okay, so that would be fine as your answer. Okay, but I'm going to show you how to combine it into one equation. All right, just because sometimes they do ask us to do that. So it should be something that you know how to do. And it might be that part C, it will help us to um, write that in, in the proper way. So I'm going to show you how to do that now with the plus C there. How to rewrite it so that we get a general solution, okay, as one kind of one term in the answer, y equals. Okay, so now, in fact, it's better, as it says general solution, it's better for you to write it as y equals, to be honest, because it says general solution, so instead of lin y, you should really have y. So in fact, I think it is necessary for us to do this, thinking about it again, because in the end, it should be y equals, not lin y equals. So we have to really, uh, you know, get rid of the lins of this, and the way to do that is to combine this into one log term on each side. So one lin y, that's fine on this side. This has to be one lin, lin term. And when it's one lin term, then I can uh, you know, get rid of the lins. I can't do it the way it is now. I can't say y equals 2 times 2x minus 3 minus x plus minus 1 plus. No. I have to write, write this as one logarithm expression, just one term. So here I'm going to write the lin of the modulus of y is equal to the lin of the modulus of 2x minus 3 squared using the power law minus the lin of the modulus of x minus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the plus c as the lin of a constant. I'm going to call it lin a. Okay, this is just a constant a. This is just a constant. So I'll say let's call c lin a. And that will help us to combine it together with this and make it nice and neat. So now what I can say is the lin of the modulus of y equals. Now I can combine these together into one 
logarithm term. So I have lin of, I can use the, the addition law, so the a will multiply with this, so it'll be a times 2x minus 3 squared over the division law for the, for the subtraction of the division law over x minus 1. Okay, so and therefore I can say, therefore y is equal to a times 2x minus 3 squared over x minus 1. All right, so I can now get rid of the logs, the lins, because the lin of something equals the lin of something. If they're both equal, then what's inside there must be the same. All right, so that's how we can find the general solution to this differential equation. Okay, now we've got to go to part C, where we're going to use this answer, I'm pretty sure. So I will copy it, and I will paste it over here. Okay, so we're going to be using this answer in this question because it says hence, meaning using what you've just done, using this. Find the particular solution of this differential equation that, sat that satisfies y equals 10 at x equals 2. So basically, we got to find the value of a, which is a constant, all right, when y equals 10 and x equals 2, and then write it together in the equation with it. Right, so whatever value a is, I'm going to write it inside this form. So first I need to find what a is, and I simply do that by substituting y as 10 and x as 2. So it's a times, that's going to be 2 times 2, I'll write, I'll write the steps here, 2 times 2 minus 3 squared over, and I'll have 2 minus 1. So I can say that we'll get here um, 10 equals, that's going to be 4 minus 3, which is 1, that's going to be a over 1, so it's a, so a equals 10. So therefore, we can say that the, the particular solution is y equals 10 times 2x minus 3 squared over x minus 1. And there we have the answer to part C. And that concludes this question from this very, very old paper, which I gave as an exam to my students, some of these questions. And this is the reason why I'm going through this paper, because some students were asking me to show them how to answer it. So I hope that was clear. Other questions from this particular paper, January 2007, can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from the exam that I gave those students um, can be found in the playlist over here. Other questions from partial fractions, I will put in the playlist over here. And other questions from differential equations and solving differential equations will be found in the playlist over here. So I'll have four playlists at the end of this video, so you can choose which ones you want to go to to find out you know, and see other types of questions. All right, so um, thank you for watching and see you soon.